This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB. Today in the arena, we are taking a look, yet another look at the beauty brought to you by the Eldraine Adventure package, but with a few new twists from the new set, and it is contending for top tier status. It recently hit number one mythic. So you've got to know about it. And that is Teamer Adventures. Again, there's always a Teamer Adventure deck since Eldraine's been introduced. But this one is called Teamer Turns because it introduces Alron's Epiphany to the equation. And the great thing about Alron's Epiphany in this particular deck is that usually an extra turn is all it takes to win the game when you have freaking Goldspan Dragon. Now, the Is It Tempo deck that was debuted very early in the format revealed the power of untapping with Goldspan Dragon, and we have some of that here. We have the Bone Crusher Giant and the Brazen Borrower from the Is It Tempo deck, and we have Saw It coming. So the Foretell on two, and then use it to counter whatever tries to remove the dragon is still a really strong strategy. But in this deck, you play that dragon, you attack, you counter or bounce something of the opponents, and the next turn you start casting All Runs Epiphany, which gives you more attacks with the dragon and the flyers. And then you use a whole bunch of mana to buy Obosh, because we are an all odd deck and we cast Obosh and then we double the damage from our Goldspan Dragon. So if you got your opponent down to 10, a dragon dealing double damage is eight, and then the attacks from the birds are another two. It's not that hard to get there. It actually closes the game incredibly fast. So the most important thing about the deck, quite honestly, is that you hit your land drops and that you curve up into something along the lines of Dragon Epiphany. And it, when you do, you just, it, it's like you just win. And it's, it's so solid and disruptive. If the opponent goes for an ultimatum, you have a saw it coming. If the opponent plays some big thing, you have a brazen borrower. If the opponents play small things, they run into bone crusher giant and love struck beast. We all know by now that the adventure package with these 12 is really good. And when you throw an edgy, it's really obnoxious. It can beat you on its own. But now it just has this extra engine. So we added Goldspan Engine 2, Adventure Engine 2, Great Henge Engine, which we have four Mammoth and four Lovestruck Beast and two Great Henge to also be a Great Henge deck, because why not? The mana, here's the thing. The curving out works pretty well, because even though we're an Obosh deck, on our even turns, we can foretell cards and play adventure modes. We actually have a ton of two drops. Bone Crusher Giant, Saw It Coming, Brazen Borrower, and Alron's Epiphany can all kind of be a two drop. Also, Foretell works really good with the Henge. When you play Henge on turn four off your Lovestruck Beast, you can tap it for two mana and foretell something, which is really nice. So the curving out works good. What's hard about this deck is the mana. You need double green, and you need double blue, and you need double red, and you need all of these things at certain points in the curve. And you have Triomes, but other than that, everything is not a dual land. So if you play a pathway on the wrong setting, like that can cost you the game so easily. And if any of you want your training wheels, go get your world trees and run that. But uh, it's very doable. It's just a lot harder than you think. This deck actually runs 26 land and four mammoth. Yeah, 30 land because you need the right colors in the right places. That's the hardest thing about the deck. If you wanna try some temples, you can go for it, but you also need untapped mana because you need to be making the right play on the curve every step of the way and tap lands can kill you. So I highly discourage temples. I do encourage thinking, do a lot of five head thinking, planning when to play your lands. That's enough introducing the deck and talking about it. Uh, deck building credit, Chris Botello, as far as I know, built the deck. He's the person I saw stream it. He streams in the evenings for the US uh, Pacific time, pretty early in the morning. Check him out on Twitch, cool guy. Um, and yeah, there's your deck credit. Now let's do a video dedication for this streak number 753. The dedication goes to Ben Balsarek. Balsarek. Ben, thank you very much for joining 
the Cool Kids Club Dojo on YouTube. Your support means a lot to me. I appreciate it. And I am going to check the store. Do we have a sweet, sweet deal for to commemorate this? Daily deals. Nope, we bought all those. So we're going to go back to the deck and we're going to find something for you. And I... So I've been waiting a lot. Actually, can we get an Obosh here? Yes, we can. Perfect. Bingo. Cosmetic Sexy Obosh for the rest of its time. We will always think of Ben Balsarek. Now let's dive in. Let the adventurous dragony turn-taking nonsense begin. All right, getting right to it. We've got the beastie. Saw it coming, great henge, all the stuff you want. We're on the play. Our opponent appears to be doing the same thing. So being on the play is huge. Having the first henge is huge. We keep. They know what we're up to. So <clears throat> probably try them next turn. That's a good draw. Let's see if the opponent has the Bone Crusher for it. Now we're just looking for a land off the top. Spike Field Hazard. That is a one of in the list on the strictly net decked version that I cut to curve out better, but it's looking nice right here, isn't it? And we'll say no attacks. We want our beat, our loves lovey dovey to be able to attack. I guess we could save that for a mammoth. Send in our attacker. Okay, they trade, which means the opponent now can't play their henge, so they must not have one. So. We could set up the Epiphany, but I think we set up the Saw It Coming instead. Because we can full just right on cast the Epiphany next turn if we want to. But we are low on stuff. Our opponent still has five cards, so we need to draw creatures. Our opponent makes another 1-1 one, one and foretells a card. How about a dragon? Can we has dragon? Innkeeper. Without an adventure creature, it's not great. But... Let's go for it. I don't think we're in a hurry to Epiphany. I think we want to accumulate some value. Maybe counter what the opponent does. If they have a Bone Crusher for this, I might counter it. Honestly, we need the cards. Opponent with their own Innkeeper. Yeah, let's fight over cards. Let's win the card fight. The foretell, and they didn't play it there, and there was no stick, means this is an all runs epiphany. Let's thin the deck just a little. All right, we got to untap here. Um... Let's see where we can get to with this. Actually, what we really want to do is draw a dragon, then do this. Let's go for this first. We might draw... Well, if we play the Obosh, we get to draw a card, but we might not draw anything good. All right, this is kind of scary. I guess we have to try. We just need to draw a dragon or some adventure creatures, and we're chilling, but right now, that's not happening. There's the dragon for the opponent, so this could just be game. If they untap and start casting time walks. Oh, man. All right, well, their beast doesn't trade with our Prey Piercer, but they could double block it. Let's see what happens if we attack with our Prey Piercer. Snap double block. Yeah. No fear. All right. 
I feel like we have to epiphany. But we can start with a triome. My goodness. Okay, we have drawn nothing but land since resolving the hinge and one epiphany. We gotta do better than that. Like, this isn't gonna do. Okay. I mean, what, maybe it will do. I'm saying it won't, but who knows? <laughs> we'll just play it all here, because why not? Dragon? Yes? Oh my god, I think we drew into it. I think we drew into the game. The victory. Just when you thought we had flooded out. Kaka. <laughs> Why not? Of course you play another dragon. Of course you flex when you've got it. Especially when they know that you top deck. Hmm. <clears throat> All right, go, baby, go. Seems like a good hand. We're up against Yorian. So, a little strange, but there's, like, nothing in the middle. Very expensive cards. So, I don't know, but we'll see. I think we can foretell. We can hold this up on three or buy Obosh. We can foretell this on four and then go in for gold span. I'm guessing that the Yorian deck will have a hard time with this. I know I want to play that on blue. Like, I'm sure about that, so I'm going to do it now and keep my options open for what we, what we draw next turn. It could be a beast, it could be a bone crusher giant, but I want to make sure I have three blue on three if I want it. You might see the... You might see the really nasty draw this game of gold span with saw it coming protection into epiphany into Obosh. So we could hold up Saw It Coming here, but or we could buy the Obosh. I don't think we need to buy the Obosh, so let's just use the Saw It Comings if possible. Although maybe I'm supposed to foretell it and have it set up for the dragon. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Because I don't think the opponent's going to do anything I really care about. When playing this deck, don't get stuck into the control pattern of I always have to have a counter spell up, I have no idea what my opponent's going to do. In the early turns, there's just not that much they're going to do to you. You're the one who is kind of setting up a, a checkmate situation for them to figure out how to react to. And foretelling is part of that. But what if they play Elspeth's Nightmare? So what? We foretell our cards. They can't get to them, you know? Opponent saying go. Maybe? Yeah, see, they're not sure what to do. They're nervous. We got them. Got them right where we want them. Gotta play this on red or we won't have the mana for the dragon. Foretell this as well. See what the opponent does. Another Roman. Yep. Go ahead. I think we do try to bone crush them. Although, this is an odd source. Once we play Obosh, it's worth more. Maybe that's where we get our four damage. Yeah, I think that's right, actually. All right. Game on, guys. See if they have a counter. It has to be a counter spell. If they do, the game continues. If they don't, this is going to be exactly the nightmare for them that we talked about. Uh, 
All right, down to 16. No play, no scry, no nothing. And they didn't buy Yorian. What are they doing? Yeah. It has to be Mystical Dispute here. They don't have it. Epiphany. End turn. Buy Obosh. Cast Obosh. Uh, attack with Dragon. Smash, smash, smash. Stomp you. That is how it goes. You only get one shot to take me out, and then you die. So I said that Obosh would like increase the damage from Giant. I was wrong. Stomp is a even cost spell. You don't have to type that comment, but I'm sure you already did. Well, we have three lands. We're on the play. We're up against Luris. Might be rogues, might be cycling. Let's see where it goes. I think we play the tap land instead of making the 1-1. One, one. I could see an argument for either, but this has to be a red now that we've drawn them out and it looks a little silly, but I think you guys understand. <sighs> okay, they have Thieves Guild Enforcer. Do we want to shoot that? It's a little more mana efficient. I guess we do. We do want to make sure that that resolves. All right, we need to find another blue to cast the Brazen Borrower at some point, but other than that, mana's okay. We can cast the Bone Crusher here. We don't, do we want to play this on green? Actually, we do, so we could also play the Mammoth. And playing the Mammoth makes a little bit more sense because we'd like to play the Giant with an Innkeeper if we draw one. Nice. The opponent didn't do anything about that. Now they have a threat they have to deal with. <clears throat> I thought we'd see like a Soaring Thought Thief. Ooh, and then a tap land here. That's good for us too. So what do they have? It might be a negate. Like what are they doing? Because Drown in the Lock would still hold priority, right? I think it would. Wind Robber. They had that last turn and didn't play it. I think they do have a negate. Roar! So, we could set up Saw It coming, but they don't want to play things on their turn anyway. So let's do a this and try to put pressure on them with the Lovestruck Beast. Crab. Considering they played a tap land last turn, I don't know that they have another land, or if they do, they may have drawn it. Their whole hand right now doesn't make sense to me. The way they've played this game doesn't make sense to me yet. It's weird. Very weird. Do they let me get into combat without killing the 1-1? One -one? Yes. Here comes 10 points. What you doing, rogues? Okay, they do drown. Can't counter it, because those aren't foretold. 
take five, okay. Foretell. End the turn. We're on six cards. Wind Robber can make it seven. Oh, that makes it seven, two. As they show off their fabled passage. Look what I drew, Mom! <laughs> and everything with sequencing, though, has been weird. I still don't feel like I know what they're up to. I had a read on a gate earlier. I'm just throwing that out the window. I don't know what's going on. Two dragons. Good job. Luris purchase. Interesting. Mana is awkward, that's for sure. I still could run this into a Soaring Thought Thief, a Thieves Guild Enforcer, or something like that. I know the opponent wants to do the Merfolk Wind Robber block. We're missing land now with a 7 drop in our hand. So we can play a Bone Crusher or we can foretell the Epiphany. But how can we expect an Epiphany to resolve against rogues? I think we just have to play the Bone Crusher. And try to keep pressure on their life total. If they counter it though, we let that resolve. Okay. Same thing with the removal spell, which I don't think they have, or I think they kill the 1-1, one, one, but who knows. They're playing weird. I'm not sure what they're what they're going for. I do hope they go for Luris here. Luris is one of their more expensive cards, so hitting it with a saw it coming if they have to defend it with a counter, they need an untapped sixth land to get back the Wind Robber, and they're tapped out. Okay, it's fine. We can brazen it. The rope, though. My god, the rope. There's a thirst on the 1-1. One, one. Interesting. You could have done either one of those. So they must have... They really expected to saw it coming. It's a bit of a backfire for them. Probably one of the best things we could possibly bar brazen borrow is our own creature. But we are stuck on land. There is no way around it. We are getting pretty wrecked on mana. So let's make the 1-1. One, one. Foretell the other saw, I think. And say go. I mean, if, if they have another Drown, another counter, like, what were they doing last turn? They don't have a land, because they missed their land drop. They go for Of One Mind, okay. <laughs> like, they definitely believe I have Saw It coming, and they're playing around it to the best of their ability. I mean, I'm not afraid of the crabs. There's a long way to go. They're trying to waste my mana, and they're succeeding at that at least, and we don't have much. Like, we're getting outmanned by the deck. Let's counter that so they don't have a good block here. That might have been hasty, but I just don't feel like I can give them all that. Oh my goodness. So, a very aggressive play is to play the Innkeeper, play the Beast, and try to draw a land for the Saw It coming, but if that misses, we just lose. 
We attack with both. I don't think they have a Thieves Guild Enforcer. No. Nope. And they let it through because they're afraid of another Bone Crusher Giant. Beast. Well, can you fight through it? Yeah, had a feeling they had that. Now, what can we do? We have to top deck. We have to top deck a removal spell for the Luris. And, ugh, or a dragon. Like, dragon would be really strong here. Interesting, so they want to trade. They don't want more cards. Two non-lands go to the graveyard. You're not quite what I'm looking for. Rumble. What else can we do? Oh, they're trading the Luris. Do they have an awakening? This saw it coming might be crucial. They go up to eight. We lose both of our guys. Play the innkeeper. We can foretell saw it coming, but it takes away some of our options, so let's not. No, no, no. Alright, not afraid of a Bone Crusher now. We still might draw it, though. Like, if we draw a land Bone Crusher here, it's pretty good. I just can't believe we haven't hit any lands. But there they, here they come. <laughs> here they come. They're late. But who knows? This is going to get interesting. Our opponent played three Drown in the Locks on us. Which they drew out of the top, I think that was 25 cards of their deck. There's still two dragons in our deck. And two Bone Crusher Giants. So, our bottom 20 cards still have some good cards lurking. Our opponent pulls out the rope. The hidden weapon of the rogue player. I don't know why they had to think about that. Seems like the easiest play I've ever seen. But we'll see. Alright, still dragons. Still dragons. Right, one more dragon. Still one more dragon in ten cards. What I need to know is if they're going to trade with this Wind Robber or not as we line up back-to-back -back turns. They have another Enforcer. That can clear. Is that good enough? It might be. One, two... Okay, so first we see if they block this. If they do, we can still win with the Bird Assault and the Bone Crusher Giant. Actually, the important thing isn't whether or not they block this. We know they will. It's will they trade it. Will they draw the card, or will they trade? They trade. Okay. Should be game. Sh 
show them the lethal. Seven cards left. Risky. Die. <sighs> ah. Gotta remember to enjoy it when you win because it's so frustrating when you lose, but sometimes it's hard to take pleasure in it because it was so exhausting and annoying. Innkeeper draw. Although really awkward with my green mana being my red mana. We'll draw the red mana. It's fine. Good innkeepers always say hello. Oh look, it's Usher of the Fallen. Oh no, another green. Oh no. <gasps> they did on red. But how are we to know? How are we to know? Turn two, Luminarch Aspirant win game. No, not yet. Yep, just that other card I can't really beat. Well, we have Brazen Borrower. We're not helpless, but it's pretty bad. Let's see if they play around Saw It coming here. They have the ability to boast up a 1-1 and not play anything into the counter. So let's see what they do. How smart are you? All right, red mana or an adventure creature. It's an adventure creature. Not really the one we want, but maybe they'll go for a Sky Mall. At least there's no Faithless Haven yet. We want them to discard. And then we bounce. Unfortunately for us, they just had to give up their fifth planes. It's so good to be a monocolor deck. All right, so we'll play the borrower. Now we have a blocker if they do Sky Maul. And if we draw a red source, we get to bone crush something that gets saved. So yay. Um, okay. Just do something. Counting all the permanents on the battlefield. Don't see why. Good draw. So they just went super wide because they want to force me to block with my innkeepers next turn. Well, I'm not falling for it. All right, land, land. Okay. They can feel the window closing, can't they? Nice top deck. Frickin' hate white. All right, well, they're gonna have to sack their dog to save this. And I guess we should give up a creature to save, to block this. Nice red mana. That that turn one Timber Crown pathway came all the way back to make me miserable. But let's make some burbs. Something. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're doing it, guys. We're doing it. <laughs> more 
more Bone Crusher Giants than Red Sources in the top 16. The Shuffler is fine. The Shuffler is fine. All I had to do, if I'd waited one more turn on this pathway, right? One more turn. Our opponent big braining it. What do I tap with this giant killer? Nothing. We're going to attack instead. Okay. All right. Well, we will definitely block here and here and here because we're bouncing that again. Bing. Boing. Otherwise, we traded some 1-1s one for 1-1s. One the Usher is finally going to boast about its amazingness here and get a little 1-1. One -one. Down to 6, we go. Hollow Blade returns, but draw red source, and that Hollow Blade is dead. Hey! Who dis? Who dis? Who dis? <laughs> Let's draw another card. Triome. Okay. Um. Pika! Wait a minute. If they draw Sky Maul, we. Okay, if they draw Sky Maul, we have another. All right, has Innkeeper done its job? Greed. I'm a greed lord. Well, red mana is about to be taxed, baby. <laughs> we got so many things to do with our red mana. All right, end step, they'll tap something. So we gotta play another one of these. And now it is time to block, actually. And we're gonna leave back one of the borrowers for the Sky Mall. And we're going to stomp the giant killer? The giant killer only attacks for one. Stomping the usher is more important, right? So they can go tap, tap, get him for one. All right. We, we can wait for the taps, though. Ooh, they tapped the borrower. So now we've got to hold this up and watch for the Sky Mall. They try to go to attackers. No Sky Mall, though. Let's stomp the Usher. Usher, Usher. Down to four. Another nerd. All right. Draw two. All runs, epiphany. Well, if we make it till next turn, we freaking did it, guys. In the meantime. Before you draw a card. That's got to die. It's true. I drew three Bone Crusher Giants before I could cast them. I know. Isn't it disgusting? All right. Sky Mall isn't lethal. Might as well get our punches in. See, if they go tap, tap, they can still force us to block, but it is what it is. I think they're just dead next turn to the Obosh with this line. Plus, we've got an Epiphany. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah, good. It, it was pretty good. It was interesting for sure. All right, on the play. Is this the rank up moment? Are we gonna get there? Are we gonna rise ahead of where we started? Pink Floyd, 
Pink Floyd has played a lot of mono red, but I think I've seen him play Gruel as well. All right, mono red. Pink Floyd, we meet again. Uh, I will offer you this one one. Would you like it? No? All right, we're gonna try to save our borrower for an annex or an ember cleaved creature. But we're going to give Mono Red here the double Lovestruck Beast treatment. And yeah, we don't block. Because we don't want this killing two 1 1s. And Rimrock Knight joins the fight. Could play a Mammoth here. But that gets Frostbit and is significantly worse. So we'll play the Beast. I think we attack with one and the other can threaten to block the Rimrock Knight. We don't really want to block the Rimrock Knight with the Beast unless we absolutely have to, because they'll have Frostbite. We slam a Bone Crusher, they say go, they're set up for their Embercleave turn. We have Counter Magic available. Let's play this tapped so that the next turn we can play the Dragon. Oh wait, this turn we could foretell saw it coming and have Brazen Borrower open. And then the next turn we could have a counter and nothing else. Yeah, if we, we'd have to draw an untapped land or we'd have no double spell. I guess we could have Brazen Borrower. Hmm. You've got to believe Ember Cleave is coming. I really want to counter it, to be honest. Because I would love to, like, trap the Bone Crusher Giant. Ferv and Champion. Well, now there's no Ember Cleave mana. You need double red for that. Pink Floyd, what are you doing? You maniac. No attacks. Okay. Dragon! Here comes a bone crushing. <laughs> this will open up Brazen Borrower. Everybody get sideways. Yeah. This is Mono Red. We play Mono Red. Ember Cleave till they're dead. It's Ember Cleave. Okay. Uh huh. Well, they can't recast it. What else? Uh huh. No more Ember Cleave. Your sword is less lit than it was a moment ago. You should do something about that. All right, can we make a 1-1? One, one? We cannot. We can see it coming, and we do have Bone Crusher Giant, both of which are very good. We're going to have six, seven, eight mana. So three of it can be Saw It Coming. Two of it can be Bone Crusher Stomp. Three of it can be another Lovestruck Beast or a Brazen Borrower. Maybe we just double side the Bone Crusher now before they have mana available. Stomp you. Play you. See what you got. You got nothing. That's what you got. I even saw that Embercleave coming. Ah! Still not top thousand. Okay. Time to go to work. All right. I want to get back into those triple digits here. Oh, this is slow. And it doesn't have double blue for the Sock Cummings. But I don't think I can mulligan it, because it's three lands and four spells and... Wrecked. Okay.
Okay. Kind of a slow start for the opponent. We might need double red, so I think I play this on blue. What am I going to do with it, though? I'm not... I don't need to brazen anything. Let's just... Hmm. do want double blue potentially available for next turn, but if we... Actually, if we foretell a saw coming, we don't need it. And these mana decisions can be crucial. We... Like, really want this on blue. And we want this on blue. One of them has to be on blue, but we can wait one more turn to see what it is. Opponent does double giant. Aggro giant, as I call it. Say go. All right, need to draw some land. In the next two turns, we need to find a land. Next turn, it could be a tap land, so... Prefer to just draw a tap land next turn and get it over with. Damage? You betcha. Any plays? Any Magic the Gathering castings? Yep. All right, counter that. Okay, we've got our other red. Should be in good position starting next turn. We've set up our dragon. We've set up our mana. We don't want to use this saw it coming this turn if we can help it. So we might do something that looks silly like bounce a giant. But we'll see. Take the hit though. Here we go again. Our opponent is Giant Fiva. Am I countering? Yeah, I think I'll counter it if they tap out for it. Down to eight. <sighs> All right, Giant Fever over here. Let's start the Dragon March. Timurit calling the dead is fine. I am okay with this. This is so close, though. And we have to watch out for Claim the Firstborn. There's so many things we have to worry about. Down to four. No reason to cast these now. Like, unlike lands, this doesn't expire at on end step. So you may as well go to your next phase. Really could have used an Alron's Epiphany. Let's see. At 16. How do we stay alive? It's going to take blocking. And blocking is hard against a deck that runs claim. So how many creatures can we play? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3. We can play the Mammoth and the Giant and kill the 2-2. Two -two. If we play another Dragon that's off the table... We could also defend with dragon. We could play a five mana dragon and then have three mana open. I don't think that's that good. Let's do this. All right, they don't have a heartless act. This does lose to multiple claims, which is definitely on the table, and it has me very nervous. Doesn't lose to the Akroan War, though. Brazen Borrower is a good card against the Akroan War. There's one claim. Do we want to do this before they gain control of it? 
We'd much rather claim our creature than theirs. It hurts, but we have to do it. Oh, it, it has to be something they control anyway. So we have to remember to claim our own giant. If we claim theirs, we die. Let's let them get into combat. Block their giant. This is the one owned by moi. Yes. Lock. See if they have their fourth giant of the game. It's been a bone crushing kind of game. Four stomps. Shuffler's fine. Valky, take my giant? No, that doesn't... Well, okay. Well, if they don't, I just stomp their Valky then. Right? They're so close to dead. They're so close to dead, too. All right. Stomp your Valky. Attack with Dragon. Now, we could play other Dragon, or we could play Bone Crusher Giant, and I think it's Bone Crusher Giant. If they had another claim, they would have played it when we had the Mammoth. It leaves them the option to top deck the claim. On the other hand, though... Wait a minute. One, two... No. On the other hand, if we play this and they are Crow in War, they win, right? What if we just hold up both? If they are Crow in War, they win. What if we just hold up this? If they are Crow in War, we block, but they hit us with a 2-2, two -two, they win. Close game. What was their turn? It was Valky and Claim. If they had on a Crow in War, they would have played that last turn too. I guess we should go for the double spell. Dead to claim, this would have been dead to war. We've seen two claims and no wars. So I think this is the play. They keep on top. Shoot. <laughs> no. We're dead to a land. We're dead to the right land. Well, now we're dead to any untapped land. They're milling the card. They're dead. They're dead. We have Brazen Borrower here. I guess they kept the claim on top. We got him. Oh my god, that was close. We got him. Oh, that was such a close one. Yes. And we are back for the post-game wrap. The deck's biggest obstacle was very much itself. If you don't have the right mana in the right place on any specific turn, you get tempoed out of the game really fast. And I don't have a ton of suggestions to fix that. I think it's doing everything that it can. Um, you can't run Lotus Cobra without cutting Obosh. There are a number of cards you can't run without cutting Obosh, and I don't think you cut Obosh. The ability to buy Obosh and just win with the dragon or with borrowers after taking one extra turn is too good. It really is. So don't cut Obosh. Don't even suggest it. And um, other than that, yeah, I guess keep good hands and make good pathway decisions. Really put off your pathway decisions if you can. It's often not worth it, you know, to have like an extra 1-1 one, one with the beast and play your innkeeper on turn two if it means that you can't play your gold span dragon on five and your epiphany on six. So just keep that in mind. And other than that, I, everything's like a dual card. The sequencing's hard. It takes practice. I treaded water for a long time, just going back and forth. And the games where I lost, sometimes I missed a land drop. Yeah, with 30 lands in my deck, I missed like land drop four and I just died. But a lot of times I missequenced my pathways. That was where my fabled passage. And that was where I made a mistake. Because on turn 
like say two, I wanted to play an innkeeper and use the Lovestruck Beast because my plan was to play Lovestruck Beast the next turn and draw a card with my innkeeper. I should have just played, just not played the innkeeper and played the Lovestruck Beast or something like that. I should have been more cognizant that the most important thing I can do is curve out. Same thing with my mammoths. I held on to my mammoth way too often and I would, you know, not, I would look at my hand, it would have three lands and maybe it would have like, not clear if I was going to have double green. Just play your darn mammoth on one. Get it out of the way. It's very important as a mana source because curving out is so crucial. Other than that, this is probably the best new version of Teamer Adventures or Teamer Ultimatum that I've seen. So if you already own a lot of cards from Teamer Adventures or Teamer Ultimatum and you're looking for the next deck to play, I think if you have the Mythics around for All Runs Epiphany and Goldspan Dragon, this is your jam. It feels robust and powerful. It just ends games. It, it's a very solid deck. I think it's an A tier contender. I'm impressed by it. It takes some practice. It takes a lot of thought put into your mana base, but you, yes, you who are cool, you can handle that and you can get to mythic and you can stomp your way up the ladder with this sucker. So do it. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Remember to like, subscribe, join the cool kids club. You're cool.